In this video, we investigate the effect of transitioning an existing three-step technology-based voting process to a two-step process. These voting processes differ in that the three-step process uses electronic poll books, hand-marked paper ballots, and a digital scanner, while the two-step process uses electronic poll books and a digital ballot marking device. To simulate the voting process, we assume that 1,500 voters will turn out to the polling location following the arrival pattern shown on screen. This arrival pattern represents a large number of arrivals in the morning, arrivals decreasing at midday, and a smaller peak in arrivals in the afternoon. A visual representation of the existing three-step voting process is shown on screen, with voters entering the polling location, joining a queue to check in where they receive a paper ballot, then traveling to voting booths where they mark their ballot by hand. After marking their ballot, the voter then travels to an available ballot scanner where they submit their ballot and cast their vote. We assume that the resource allocation for this voting process consists of three check-in devices, nine voting booths, one ballot scanner, and one ADA-compliant ballot marking device. With this resource allocation, voters wait an average of 18 minutes to vote. To investigate the effect of transitioning from a three-step voting process to a two-step ballot marking device-based voting process, we must first understand the processing times for the steps in each voting process. The check-in step for both the three-step and the two-step process is identical, with an average check-in time of one minute and 13 seconds and a maximum check-in time of 17 and a half minutes. A distribution chart of check-in times using electronic poll books is currently on screen, which shows the majority of voters taking between 45 seconds and 1 minute and 14 seconds to check in. The ballot marking step in the three-step process exhibits an average marking time of 4 minutes and a maximum marking time of 28 minutes. A distribution chart of ballot marking times for paper ballot marking is currently on screen which shows the majority of voters taking between two and a half and five minutes to mark their ballot. The ballot scanning step in the three-step process takes voters 19 seconds on average, but may take up to two minutes to cast their ballot, with the majority of voters scanning their ballots in 11 to 24 seconds. With the two-step process, ballot marking and ballot scanning is combined in a single step through the use of a ballot marking device. Using the ballot marking device to mark and cast a ballot takes voters seven minutes on average, but can take a maximum of more than an hour. A distribution chart of ballot marking and ballot scanning times using a ballot marking device is currently shown on screen, with the majority of voters taking between four and a half and eight and a half minutes to use the device. Through a comparison of these two voting processes, the two-step process appears to require a longer time to mark and cast a ballot. However, fewer steps are required to mark and cast the ballot. The differences between these processes may have a measurable effect on voter wait times and require adjusted resource allocations to ensure voter wait times are short. A visual representation of the two-step voting process is currently shown on screen using the same resource allocation as the three-step voting process with three check-ins and as many ballot marking devices as there are voting booths with nine in the presented model. With this resource allocation, the two-step voting process experiences average wait times of four hours and 36 minutes. This represents an increase in voter wait times of more than four hours when compared to the three-step process. While this increase in wait times is particularly large, the design and length of the ballot and the type of ballot marking device used will affect voter wait times. The explored scenario and estimated wait times do not reflect any particular polling location, but do demonstrate that replacing voting booths with ballot marking devices as a one-for-one -one trade may lead to significant voter wait times. In order to ensure voters wait less than 30 minutes to vote, the two-step process must allocate three check-ins and 16 ballot marking devices, two of which being accessible, to serve 1,500 voters. Through these results, we demonstrate the need to reconsider voting equipment allocations when voting processes change. While transitioning from one voting process to another may have desired benefits, such as security, scalability, or ease of use, 
the effects on voter wait times and resource allocation must also be considered. In the example shown in this video, if the same allocation of check-ins was kept and as many ballot marking devices were allocated as there were voting booths, voters would wait more than four hours longer on average to vote. Additional considerations when implementing new voting equipment or a new voting process include the rate of errors and breakdown rates of the new device. When using a device that is new to voters, it is likely that the voters will take longer to perform a voting step than expected, as they must become familiar with the new equipment. Additionally, different voting equipment may have a higher or lower likelihood of breakdowns that require a poll worker's attention. Understanding the difference in breakdown and error rates may require observations throughout multiple elections, but it is critical to determining how many devices should be allocated to each polling location. If breakdown rates are higher for a new device or if breakdowns take longer to resolve, then more devices may be needed to ensure that voters do not face significant waits to vote. 